Week two is Connect, and it's on Life on Mission. And today we're going to be talking about some fun things about how Jesus went to right here. Okay? Here's the analogy. He was right here, and everyone went around him, right? Is that how it went in the Bible? Jesus stayed in one spot, and maybe, maybe it's better if I go like this. Jesus stayed in one spot, and everyone moved around him. And they're like, hey, Jesus, we want to come where you're at. So you stay still and, and let us come to you. That's what we're going to be talking about, right? No, we're going to be talking about connecting how Jesus went from where he was to where everyone else was. And that's what Connect is all about. And we're going to be talking about some things. But first, I want to show a video. Um, I got this in the mail. I'm losing it when you get my age. I got this in an email, snail mail. I got this in an email from, I forgot his name, the person who we are building the house for in Mexico, okay? And what this video is, it's, you guys get to see the video works, <laughs> the house work site, okay? And what their job is, before we get there at the end of June, they have to have the house destroyed, level, and then we come in and we build it in three and a half days. So this is the video of the site and the house. There's a cool little Casas thing. And I, it's like 23 seconds. Um, so I want you guys to see what, what we get to do this summer. So that's, that's the house. I, got, I thought it was pretty exciting. And we get to, I want to let you know, so you can be praying about, and there's an insert in your bulletin. Uh, I learned the family name. We are building a house for Lorena Hernandez. Her age is unknown. She didn't want to say her age. So she's up here. Well, she has a son, Gustavo. He's 25. He was born uh, just a couple months after me. Um, well, he's not 25. He's 24. It's what it, it's what it says. Um, Lorena, her son Gustavo, who's 25, 24, and he has a son, uh-oh, thought, what is it? Boys, I told you the other night. Good job, Trey. Okay, so they, he has a son, Gustavo has a son who is 10. So he had this son when he's around 14. And so I just want to let you guys know, so you guys be praying for the Hernandez family as we continue. And this actually has a point. Uh, we're going to be talking about Connect. Well, first, I, I need a volunteer. Oh, Iverson, come on up, Iverson. Thank you. All right, but here, oh, all right, here's the other thing. I need, I need someone, a volunteer, who is a little older than Iverson, okay? Let's say the next generation. So would anyone be willing? No, no. We need someone the next generation. Oh, are you sure? Let's go a little bit older. Let's go a little bit older. Can I get a volunteer, someone a little older than? Come on up. Come on. Come on down. I need you to hurry, though. Hurry. We're on a time limit. Yeah. So we're going to be playing this game. It's going to be put on the screen. It's called Generational Gap. We're going to be talking about how do we connect one generation to another, and how Jesus connected with his circle, but he also went out and connected with others. And so we got this, be a gentleman. So we have this awesome, per oh. oh, so we have this awesome game, and so what's going to happen is there's going to be a question, and the first one's like a student question. Well, Iverson uh, is going to have to try and figure out what it is. No, no. Uh, Iverson's going to have to say what it is, and it might be something from an older generation. And then the older generation, which is seasoned and all-knowing, right, uh, gets, gets a question about a young, a young thing that's happening. So here's the first one. You have to speak in the mic as we hurry up. So can you name that shoe? This is the older generation. You have a mic. You can speak into it. Harachis. 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 All right, let's see what it is. It is the pump. They pump it. 
Your dad has a pair. All right, let's see. All right, here's the adult question. Can you tell me this young shoe? And if you can't read it, it's SPLY 250. It's, no, that's what I said, 350. Um, I don't know. I'm taking orders. Anybody all right. No, I'm asking you. I don't know. Okay, well, do you know this one as a young, yes. what is it? Easy's? Yeezy's. Yeezy's, they're a type of yeah, shoe. That was my yep, exactly. Well, he got it. He's young. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear the student question. Can you name that rapper? This is from an older generation. Five. No. Do you know it as the older generation? Five, four, three, two. Yeah, say that. Ludicrous. No, it's Coolio. It's Coolio. All right, let's hear it go. Here you go. Can you name this young rapper? Bow Wow. Oh, Bow Wow. Let's see. Close. Fatty Wap. Close. Close. Nope, nope. Hold on. All right, let's go. Can you name? Now, shh. Shh. Crowd. Crowd control. Coming back. I don't know his name, but he's a guy. No! Dude looks like a lady. Nah, nah. Anyone else? No. He plays in RV. RV? Yeah, he plays in RV. So I need a name for the movie. Hurry. Three, two. Mrs. Doubtfire. Yo, just wait. Here you go. Here's the adult question. You have grandkids. Yeah, this is to you. Five. Four, three. Twilight, yeah! Paper Towns. A student question. Name that MTV person. You are smart. MTV person. No, I'm not. Go ahead. Five, four. Better say it or you're going to be wrong. Three. Two, two one. <laughs> say it. Do you know it? You can't tell him. I know. Uh, tell him no. That is the wrong answer. The right answer is actually Kurt. Lauder. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear adult. Let's see. You guys, this is great. You guys, that's, that's why I said no to you. Um, can you name that MTV person? Yeah, that person right there on MTV. Shirley Temple? That is correct. It's Chanel, Chanel East Coast. East Coast. All right, here you go. I, I know. I know it's West. All right, student. Now, shh. Name that TV show. Almost. Name that TV show. Goosebumps. Goosebumps! Are you afraid of the dark? Are you ready for this? I'm not sure. All right, adult question. Ooh, name that TV show. Ooh. Five, four, three. Three, two. Oh, Stranger Things! Yeah! Good job! Good job! Look crazy! All right, I think... Uh, uh, Steve Urkel. Steve Urkel. No, that's not your dad. Steve Urkel! <laughs> Steve Urkel, he's got this! Here you go. Steve Urkel! Oh! Hey! I know you do! All right, name that character. Name it. Three, two, that, that's it. Um, right there. Oh, did you say Dan DTM? That's so correct. You got that exactly crazy. Is that all? That is all. So, as you can see, there needs to be a little connection. Sometimes we're, we're a little disconnected. Now, you can go sit down. Iverson, I need you for about 25 more minutes. Yeah, you, you can go. Help her down. All right. So, the point of the whole craziness of that is... Three, two, one. So the point of the craziness is that th there has to be a connection. There has to be a reason why we get together and we connect. Okay. And so today we're going to be jumping into to Acts one eight, and that's going to be the that's the basis verse for the uh, for life on mission. And we're going to be learning our new scripture tonight, which is Matthew nine nine through thirteen. Um, and the and Acts one. Eight should be on the screen, and, and this was our 
Um, if you're in, involved in a small group, this was the verse they encouraged you to learn. And it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and then in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We are just piggybacking off of what Dave said yes, last week in the introduction, and we're going to be jumping into week one or week two of the series, Connect. Now, how does this go in line with what this verse says? And we're going to jump into it right now on Matthew 9. Um, so at this point, Jesus is walking. Jesus, he, he is on the road, and he is going, and he is laying down the law. He is talking. He just got done with the Sermon on the Mount, and if you know anything about that, he is just laying it on thick. He's talking about adultery. He's talking about divorce, oaths, eye for an eye, love for enemies, all these big topics in the Bible and, and what he's speaking on. And then all of a sudden he starts talking about, you know, crazy things like true and false disciples. Uh, he heals a man with leprosy. The cost of following Jesus. He calms a storm. He restores two demon-possessed men. And while he's walking, it leads us right up to 9-9. When he sees Matthew. He sees this guy, Matthew. And we're going to start with Matthew 9-9. Nine, nine, and we're going to read through it. And it says, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew, sitting in the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. And verse 10, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we get to come and uh, dive into your word and to see what you have in store for us today. Lord, I, uh, I pray that your spirit comes and is upon us, that we can, we can get as much from this as we can. And God, that um, you convict us and you, and you uh, move us out from here to go do what you have called us to do. It's in your son's name pray. Amen. So, Christian stuff. Here's, here's the fun thing. We're going to talk about some Christian stuff. Christian stuff, we have our own music. You know, we have our own music. We have our own clothing line. Um, we have our own, I've seen some bracelets. I have seen anything from our own restaurants. Um, and, and we've developed a bubble where we like to be in our bubble, and, and it's nice, and, it, and, it, and it's comfy cozy. And, and it's good because we're in our own little bubble. It's like our house. That's why we never want to leave. Um, that's why I like the chair in our living room. You sit there. Anyone, anyone have a chair? We have our own little bubble, and we're, and we're comfortable, and yet it is refreshing. Now, sometimes, and what we're going to talk about today is getting out of the bubble, about connecting. Um, and, and Jesus tells us one job. And speaking of one jobs, I have a couple more pictures. We're just going to continue it on. From one jobs last week um, to one jobs this week. And we have some uh, pictures on the screen. And it's this one. This guy had one job. McDonald's McDonald. One job, right? And the next one. It floats on water. 129, it's on sale. Get it while you can. It floats on water. It's, it's in the bottom. It's in the rocks. One job. All right, let's see this next one. Shh, cool. Young drivers, go slow through sh zone. It's what, it's one job. It's spelled wrong. Okay. You had one job. Volume up and down, right? No, left and right. One job. And then, and then my personal favorite, the last one. So frustrating, right? So frustrating. Come on, you had one job. One job. And, and that's the thing, as we talk about connect, uh, how do we connect all these crazy things? Well, Jesus told us our one job in the verses that we just read. And we're going to go back through them, and we're going to dissect them, break them apart, and see what the text has for us today. These little verses, and how we can apply these verses 
into our daily lives and to our lives this week. And so we're going to start back through uh, with 9-9, and it's going to be on the screen, and we're going to go with this. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. So he's walking. He just, he just got done preaching. He calmed the storm. He did all this. He healed these demon-possessed. And he's walking. Him and his gang, him and his posse, they are walking. And all of a sudden, they, see up, they look up, and they see the tax collector's booth. I like to imagine from right here, the exit doors. So you could see it, and these tax collectors, they basically had one rule. Just collect the, ta- collect the taxes. They could, they could go anywhere and set up a shop anywhere. And so what they would do is they would go to main places. Like, I know... You're probably going to leave through the exit doors. So that's where I would set up a shop. And that's what they would do. And so from back here, he's looking at him. He's like, man. (sighs) We have to go back through there. That's the only way out out there. We have to go through the door. And for me, if I was with my friends, uh, it kind of makes me think of the toll roads. When I went down to Mexico and we went down to Texas a couple years ago for a mission trip, went through Oklahoma. Oh, my. There is a toll road every, I'm feeling like five miles. No, it's more like every 30. But I feel like we're always stopping. And if I see this tax booth up here in in the gang, I'm pretty sure I would be the one that would kind of scoot over to the far right. I really feel like I would be the one who came over here. So I'm farthest away. And then, like, if if some of the youth students were here, I would make them go. I would say, "You, you guys all are rich. Your parents are rich. You guys go. And I would make them pay the taxes. And then they would be asking for food money later. Um, but that's what I would do. I would get onto the side and, and go. And I can kind of imagine that's what his disciples are thinking. When they, they look up, they see this, and they're like, man, we have to pay taxes again to this sellout. And this is what it is. This is what he is. He's a sellout because he is not considered a true Jew at the time. A Jewish figure, he was, they considered him a sellout because he was a Jewish figure who sold himself out to the Roman government. So the true Jews, the ones who weren't tax collectors, they despised him. They're like, man, I want nothing to do with you because, man, you're doing us like that. And no, we grew up in the same dirt patch down the road. Why, why would you do that to me? And so there's not a good taste, not a good taste about them in their mouth. So they see him. They're looking up. And they see him. But Jesus says these words, Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Out of all the words he could say, he said, follow me. He could have said things as, repent, sinner. Like, really, bro? He could have said any of these two-word segments, but he says, follow me. You know, the way my mind thinks is, he just got up and followed him. Are you crazy? If I walked over to, to, well, I wouldn't walk. I would drive over to McDonald's and Love's. I just said, hey, follow me to someone. More than likely, they're not going to follow me because that's weird. And it's a little creepy. Um, but that's all he said. He said, follow me. And so that, and it's simple. And I think there's something we can learn from here is it's simple. And now when we connect with others, I think we make it too difficult. We want to say the right things, look the right way, because because we're a Christian, we go to church. This is how we this is how we act. Um, it's simple, and I think that's something we can learn from this text. So Matthew got up and followed him. As we jump back into ten, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. It just goes from. Get up, follow me. Okay, I got up, I followed you. Next thing you know, we're having dinner. So Jesus is at this at this party with people eating food with all these tax collectors and sinners, and a Pharisee comes along in eleven. When the Pharisee saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now obviously that is not said with with love. That's not said, Hey, Jesus' disciples, why is your teacher eating with those terrible people? I can, I can tell, I can, when I read it, that's how I like to imagine the voice. That's not the case. It wasn't a nice statement. It was rude. 
and it was probably offensive, and yet that is what happened because Jesus was associating with tax collectors and sinners. And then on 12, it says, On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Now the party that he was at, he was eating. He was eating there with them. Now, this is, this is going to be the main thing tonight, today. Jesus was there. He didn't say, hey, come, come with me to 1030 service at WCC, which is great if you invited. I'm not, I'm not looking down on that. He didn't say, hey, um, I need you to, to come at 1030, and if you come, I'll sit by you. I'll get you this nice little water bottle. I'll get you, there's candy in it. You want some coffee? The best coffee in town. You want donuts? Only on the second Sunday of the month. Um, no, he's not saying, hey, if you come, you know, I'll sit with you. And, and we can go from there. No. They are here. Jesus is over here. Jesus isn't waiting for them. Jesus always goes to them. And that's the point of connect. Going from where we're at to them. And it's all about connecting. Um, this week, uh, this series is Tim Harlow's, and he's preaching, and he wants to give you an example each week. Last week is the big house. We understand the house. That's where it's going to happen. Well, this year, this week is the challenge is the backyard. That's the example in, in Tim Harlow's book and in the series, the backyard. Now, the back ar- backyard, what, what happens in the backyard? Can anyone tell me what happens in the backyard? Cook it. Oh, did you read the book? Wow, look at you. Um, eat. Way to use the word eat. Um, eat. Eating happens in the backyard. And this, is, and this is the thing for this week. I want to encourage you to have a cookout. And when you do, let me know. And if you don't, I'm going to get up next week and say, hey, we had zero cookouts. Good job. No, that would be terrible. Um, the challenge is to have a cookout. Now, do you want to invite some friends? Yes. But the point here that Tim is trying to make is do you know your neighbors? Do you know your neighbors around your house? To have a cookout and invite them because they might not know Jesus. Because Jesus didn't go to Matthew. Jesus wasn't in the temple and saw Matthew walking by in the temple. Hey, come on in. Actually, he couldn't. Matthew was banned from the temple. Tax collectors, they were traitors. They were banned. And so Jesus went to Matthew. And so I'm going to ask, well, Tim's asking as well, to have a cookout and then let us know. See how many people you can get there who don't know Christ. And that's the point. And that's the point is to not know Christ. Because out of the Bible, there's like 34 encounters um, that happen with people, encounters, encounters that happen with Jesus. 34. How many happened in church? Does anyone know? Five. One. All the rest of the encounters happened outside of the church in sinners' homes at a table with sinners. And that is the point of Connect. How can we leave our little bubble and go be with them? Now, there's a lot of stories like you can go. I know in England, a big thing right now is to go into, go into the bars and have a drink because that's how, that's where everyone's at. If you want to reach a teen, that is where they're at. Now, I'm not saying go do that. Um, but if you're strong enough and, and, and you have the self-discipline, that could be something in your life that you could go and do. But I'm not saying go in there if that's a weakness. That's, that's not. If that's a weakness. No, I'm not saying reconnect with your ex-girlfriends on Facebook. Hey, I wonder how you are. Or boyfriend. Sorry, I shouldn't just single out guys. Um, hey, how are you? I just want to reconnect. I want to tell you about Jesus. That's probably not the best thing. Um, that you can do, and it might be frowned upon. Um, def- definitely frowned upon. Um, how could we take where we're at and connect to people who aren't believers? Now, 
How many of you like this place? Does anyone like this place? Well, you're terrible. Does anyone like this place? They have the best water. Actually, it's from the fountain. Um, I have a story of Starbucks. Uh, last week I was sitting there. Um, I love Starbucks. Um, I, I have mastered a plan in my head where I can, you know, be very cautious with my money. Very cautious. And if I go and I can, I learn the menu, if I get certain things, it's free refills. And then if you're there enough, you become a gold card member and they send you a gold card and it's also on your phone. You just, and you get more free, free stuff. The more stuff you buy, the more stuff you get free. And it's great. Tot loves it. It's a big section in our budget. Our tithe, Starbucks, food. That, that's the priority that happens in our house. Uh, no. Um, don't ban me um, from Starbucks. But the point is, I went. And, and they have a sweet thing. They have the app. You can order online. And it says online on the app that it, when you order, it takes about five to seven minutes to expect your order. So you can be driving down the road, obviously not driving in the passenger seat, and order your Starbucks drink. By the time you get off the interstate, you pass Walgreens on, Dirk, on Clear Lake. Oh, boom, you're right there. You walk in, and they should have your drink right there. Well, I had the opportunity to go and read a book one day. I love reading so much. Um, and I was sitting in the chair, and I saw this lady walk in. And with these glasses, I can see a lot. Um, it's weird because I've not been able to see. And then I got the glasses. And I saw w the way she was holding her phone like this. And I could look right over her shoulder. I wasn't being nosy or creepy. Because um, she was kind of like going like this. And she was placing her order. And in my mind, why didn't you place it earlier? Well, get in line. You're already inside. And so she's placing her order. And... And then she hits it, and, like, the screen comes and says, thank you. Blah, 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 blah. I can tell you all, but it's pointless to you. Um, and so she's like, yes, and she puts it in her pocket. Okay. The counter's over here. Well, there's, a, like, a little condiment table. And she comes over, and this is on uh, Clear Lake, and she's, like, moving stuff around, like, sweeping some sugar into, like, the little trash can. And then she's like, Ugh. And then she comes up and starts turning people's drinks where they, where they place your drink, and they put this, like, awesome little label on it. And so like, hey, Venti, I'm not going to tell you what I got. You might make fun of me. Uh, passion tea. Um, <clears throat> it's really good. And so she's going and she starts looking at people's drinks. And like to me, I'm sitting in the chair and I'm like, don't touch my drink. Like, I don't want you touching my drink. But it wasn't my drink. But I was just looking and I was like, she is really impatient. I should go talk to her. No, I sat there because I was like laughing in my head. I'm like, man, because I know it says five to seven because I've done it several times. And then she asked, hey, um, can, you, can, can you tell me where my drink is? And the, the barista, nice person, a lot nicer than me, is like, uh, we, we will get to it when we get to it. And she's like, okay, well, I, well, I placed an order online. And she's like, oh, yeah, we got it. It's here. Okay, cool. So she comes back over and she starts fidgeting with the table again, like the nutmeg and all the stuff right there, the cinnamon and uh, fixing all the stuff. And I'm just watching her and she comes back over. They place one drink, one drink. And she looks at it and I'm like, don't touch my drink. It's not mine though. Um, but it's weird. And, she, and she's just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then eventually about five, five, five to maybe seven minutes after she ordered, boom, here comes her drink. She grabs it and goes. You know, and I'm just like, man, that was some time that you could have a little conversation. Now, I say that not to, not to belittle her or push, put her down. Um, but I will tell you about the time that same day I, I got to meet this guy by the name of Deontay. I can't say his last name, so we'll just stay with Deontay. Deontay came up, and I just got a small little little drink. And uh, knowing cause I was going to be there for a while, just and it's cheaper because I haven't figured out if you get the cheapest one and you know the menu, you get refills all day. It's great. And so I got the small one, and I was like, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep pumping it all day. I'm a gold, I'm a gold member. I should get my due. And so I'm sitting there, and I go up and I ask for a refill. This guy, I can tell it was a shift change, so I haven't seen him past like six hours. Um, I can see him, and he's like, hey man, 
uh, how's it going? I'm like, it's going well. I've just been sitting reading. And I had this book in my hand. It was uh, Tim Tebow, his book, Shaken. And he was like, oh, Tim Tebow, he, he rocked in football. He's not that good at baseball. I'm like, he's in the minor leagues. Are you in the minor leagues? No, he's decent. He had a home run, first at bat. Off slow pitch. Um, but he's like, man, that's, this is important. Like, I could tell he, he was intrigued. And then the famous question, I love it so much. He's like, hey, what do you do? I was like, oh, I'm a pastor up, up the road at Williamsville. And he's, he's like, oh. And I was like, yes. Off the hook. Don't have to talk. Um, and he goes, he kind of stood there. He's like, you know what? I had this really cool thing happen. I had this praise in my life. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what's that? And he's like, well, I, well, I, I live over on this side of town, but I worked at uh, the Starbucks on Veterans, and I always had this long drive. Uh, well, the, I actually asked if, if there was any openings here at Clear Lake, and so uh, they, just, they just transferred me, and it's a lot closer and all this. So that's like a really cool thing. And I'm like, yeah, it is. I've never seen you over there. And so now I can see you here all the time. And he goes, oh, do you like Starbucks? I was like, yeah, I'm a gold card. Gold card member. He's like, are you really? And I'm like, yeah. Only took me eight weeks to get. And it was great. And he's just laughing. And, and he's just like, man, this is a really cool thing. Like, I, ho- I hope I see you in here more often. I'm like, me too. Man, this is, this is really neat. And he goes, well, do you have a drink? And I'm like, yeah, I just got the small one. And I was like, Cause I've been here all day. And so I don't want to drink too much. Watch my calories and all this. And he's just like, well, I'm going to get you this Vinci. I'm going to get you the big one. And I'm like, no, man, you don't have to. Like, it's a, it's, I've been here all day. It's all right. And he goes, no, let me do that to you. I was like, all right. I'm not going to argue with you. And can I have that um, a lime refresher? Can, I, can you just make that? Light ice. Light ice, please, because they load it. And I said, he's like, not a problem. He's like, man, I hope to see you here more. I'm like, John said, man, I shook his hand. I was like, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'll get to see you more. And it's just really neat just to, just to sit and talk with you. Uh, he's just like, man, I'm just happy that I'm, I'm closer to home. I'm closer to home. I'm like, yeah, less gas, less wear and tear, less oil changes. Like, that's, that's stuff. And he's like, it's all good. But the whole point of that is, is not to lift me up and lift up Starbucks. But if you ever go and you have a gift card, you can throw it this way. Um, no. Is the point of connect. When you go out, do you take time to maybe ask your barista? Or maybe you go out for lunch today, do you ask time to, to talk to your server? We all have a battle. We all have a story. Take that time. And this is, and this is the whole point. Jesus was right here. He left where he was at to go to the sinners. Go to people who didn't know him. And he did that for a reason. Because later on in, in chapter 9, at the very end of the chapter, some craziness is about to happen as we wrap up. The workers are few. They talk how the, the harvest is ready. And yet we just need to go to the harvest. Go to the people who are starving for Jesus. Go to the people who are wanting to know who he is. Because sometimes, ready for this, this is the big one. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with witnessing that we forget to witness. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with, well, this is how I have to do I have to make sure that they see that, that this is what we do. We've got to be perfect to Jesus. got to look that we actually forget the point. You're so overwhelmed with witnessing that we actually forget to be a witness, to be there, to do life together, to be with them, to eat with them. We all like to eat. It's a fact of life. I like my two meals a day. I like it. I don't really eat breakfast, but I like lunch and dinner. It's something that we do. Can we take some time this week as a church to go out individually and try to invite people over just for food? You don't even have to talk about Jesus yet because that's later on in the series. That's in the share part. That's in the share. We still got to learn to serve and to share and to grow and to pray. Those are the five things for this series. That's in the share. 
We just want to get them to the backyard. That's the picture Tim paints. Get them to the backyard, have some food, and just simply listen to life and be there. And that's what Jesus did. He went off out of his way and saw the tax collector, the one that no one wanted anything to do with, the one that was not allowed in the house. He went to them. And as we, as the band comes up, and as I get ready to get off stage, that is the challenge. How can we get out of our bubble and go and live a life for Christ? Now let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer. How many of you, raise your hand, came to know Jesus through a Billy Graham crusade? Does any, did anyone? Billy Graham crusade? Anyone? Okay. How many of you came to know Jesus through a bumper sticker on a car? Right? Right? How many of you came to know Jesus through a billboard? Any billboarders? Like, oh, I need to know that guy. That's Jesus. How many of you came to know Christ through someone inviting you as a kid to VBS? How many of you came to know Christ through someone taking some time and maybe meeting you at somewhere just to eat and just to talk? How many of you, you get what I'm going? We go too big, and it starts so small with an essential for the day. Food. Eat. Go to the backyard to eat. And that's where Jesus went. He went from his, off his road to Matthew's table and sat around at the naughty people party. He sat there, and he was with them. So he left his group his core. But also, this is Jesus. He's strong enough. He, he knows. And he went to them. As I'm down here, today I just want to offer some uh, a prayer of encouragement. If you, if you would like some prayer for some encouragement of to maybe step out this week and host the barbecue, I will be up here and I will, and I will pray some encouragement. That, and that's, that's the point of connect. Of where do we, how can we leave our little self our little bubble, and go to where other people are at. And we like to eat. Go out and have some dinner, have some lunch. And that's what Tim is trying to push here. That's what Jesus is pushing. It's important to sit around a table. It's important to go and be amongst people who just aren't Christians. I've heard one person say that you can't really grow spiritually if you're not out being relational. And just think about it. Just ponder it. You can't really grow spiritually if you're not out being relational. It's the importance of coming together, getting some food, and just doing life together. And this week, as we go on, I'm going to finish with the final verse. Uh, this is your challenge. This next week in small groups, you're going to have a challenge again to memorize a verse. And this one's Matthew 9, uh, 12, and 13. And it's going to be on the screen. And this is... It's on hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy. I desire mm, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. I'm going to pray. And if you just need some encouragement up here, or if there's something else, I'll be up here. But let this today connect. Let's go from where we're at to where others are at, because that's what Jesus did. He didn't wait for them to come to him. Um, and that's not how it works. Our job is to go into all the nations, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to be a witness. So I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. I pray that, uh, God, we can be encouraged to, to step out of our comfort zone, to step out and to, to live a life more for you. In all that we do, people know who we are. And God, as, as Jesus went away and he, and he sat with the sinners and he sat with the tax collectors at Matthew's house, the crazy thing is, who wrote the book? Matthew. Someone invested in Matthew's life, and yet, look what happens. God, we thank you for that. How can we use that in our lives today? When, when we invest in someone's life, how can they be used for you? And that's the story of Matthew. It's a powerful story, and God, I just pray that that, that can be an encouragement to 
to the church. That can be an encouragement to someone sitting in the chair just, just wondering, God, I, I just don't know what I can do. God, I don't know how I can be an encouragement. Oh, but I have this big backyard. And it's a nice little fire pit. God, move us to action as we learn this life on mission. God, move us to connect in the way that you want us to. Move us to connect in a way that is said in your word. We want to be like you. We want to do the things you do. Have a mind that thinks like yours. But sometimes we don't always want to follow in your footsteps because it makes us uncomfortable. God, call us out because the harvest is there, but the workers are few. Give us encouragement, and God, we just thank you for being here in this house and bringing us together to build us up, to send us out. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.